Uh, but that didn't sound like concrete facts. That sounded like a guy who heard stuff just like I've heard stuff, just like y'all have heard stuff, just like everybody in the chat room's heard stuff. He could have been sitting down with Joel Klatt talking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, the way that that came out earlier, it sounded as though he was on the super inside and he was breaking this news. And then when I actually hear him talk, he just kind of sounds like everybody else that's speculating. But... Thanks for watching Numbskull News, and today we're talking again about the Big 12. Uh, now that everyone pretty much has stiff-armed the living hell out of the Big 12, <laughs> we're talking about uh, the Pac-12, the Big 10, and the ACC forming their little alliance together, their scheduling alliance, which is smart. It's a smart move, and I'll explain about why it's a smart move here in just a minute, but they left the Big 12 out. That should come as no surprise. It, it seemed to have caught a lot of people in the uh, sports media off guard or a little surprised by that. But the Big 12 really doesn't have anything to offer, you know, these other big conferences or bigger conferences. These other conferences have these blue blood, you know, uh, programs like Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, uh, Oregon, USC, Florida State, Miami, Clemson, you know... They get a lot of ratings, all right? These are big, huge programs. And after Texas and Oklahoma leave the Big 12, well, there's no more blue blood programs. I mean, you know, TCU, you know, it, it draws, you know, they, they get they get ratings, but they don't get what Oklahoma and Texas get. They don't get what Alabama and LSU get. It, it's insane. <laughs> it's, it's not even close. So, there, you know, to me, there was this kind of no doubt they were going to get left out of that. And because uh, they don't have enough to offer, really. And of course, the ACC commissioner said that, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but the Big 12 are fine. <laughs> They're fine. Let them stay on their own. They're fine. You're not coming here. You know, not West Virginia. Nobody. You're not coming here. And of course, the Pac-12 just said the same thing. We're not expanding, but, you know, thanks for asking. And that was always a fool's errand, you know, because I kept hearing all these people in the in the media, especially around Big 12 countries, say, hey, just do a merger with the Pac-12. I'm like, why would the Pac-12 want to do that? Because whatever media pie that they got, you know, whatever TV contracts they got, do they want to split it up an additional eight ways? They don't. Not unless one or two of those teams brings in a lot more money, you know, like to kind of like cover the cost of those eight teams. And the same thing with the ACC, same thing with the Big Ten. You know, a lot of people think, well, the Big Ten might, you know, take Kansas because Kansas is a, you know, an elite basketball school, huge program. But I'm sorry, college basketball doesn't draw a dick when it comes to ratings. That It really doesn't. Uh, now, the NCAA tournament does. That, that draws big ratings and big interest. But the regular basketball season, no one cares at all. You know... The football programs, that's what really gets the eyeballs. That's what gets drives ratings, drives advertising, and drives billions of dollars into these universities. So that's, you know, that's where we're at. Football is king. And the Big Ten, they're not going to take Kansas. I'll be shocked if they take Kansas. I'll be shocked if they take anybody. That's why they did their alliance, so they don't have to absorb more teams and split their pies up even more. You know, that's why the Big 12 stayed at 10 teams for a long time. Because they didn't want, you know, the TCUs and the Texas Techs and Oklahoma States, they didn't want to divide that pie up even more. All right, that's why they they, they weren't going to bring in Houston like they should have done a while back. Should have brought in BYU a while back. They didn't do that. And that's because they didn't want to split that pie up. So now everybody's on this expansion train. Oh, you got to expand. Well, you've been having to expand since the beginning. It's just now it's become, you know, openly obvious that nobody wants the Big 12. Nobody wants any of these teams. Even though they do have value, they just don't have value to those conferences. For whatever reason, no one can see that. But, you know, now it's blatantly in your face. So, yeah, duh. What, what do you do? You expand. No shit. And everyone's picking their teams, you know. Well, we need to go get Cincinnati. We need to get BYU. We need to get UCF. You know, we need to get Houston. And, and those are all fine choices. You know, no problem with that. The Big 12 here really has an opportunity to really start thinking outside the box, thinking in more grand terms 
Stop with this BS of who's going to save us, who's going to throw us a lifeline. You know, okay, no one's going to throw us a lifeline, so I guess we'll get back to 12 teams. Stop. All right? Uh, like I said, think in grander terms. Because merger, actually, people had it right. <laughs> After I really thought about it, and I thought, because I thought for several weeks now, you know, the different teams and why you would bring them on. I've watched plenty of videos on, you know, how the Big 12 can, can expand back up to 12 teams and, and, and the best candidates to bring in. But I thought back on it for a moment when I started looking at all the teams that could possibly be brought in. Merger is right. But not the Pac-12, not the ACC. Merge with the AAC, the American Athletic Conference. Because if you're going to expand back to, to 12 teams, you're going to take at least three of those teams out of the AAC. And there's a reason for that. Because of the group of five, which are the smaller conferences within Division One, the AAC is is by far the most powerful, the most popular. They got the best teams. UCF has been ready to be a Power 5 school. Cincinnati's ready to be that. Memphis is ready to be that. Houston is ready to be that. These teams have got, you know, the, these schools have got legit programs with legit coaches, and they get legit players, even though they're not Power 5. And unlike everybody else stiff-arming you, I think the AAC would be totally down for that to become a Power 5 mega conference. Because you add those two conferences together, you got 19 teams. It's real easy. You merge, and then you add BYU, who's an independent. They don't have to pay something to, to leave a conference and go to another one. They can just do it if they want to. And really, BYU, as far as the, like the remaining eight Big 12 teams, they get just as good a ratings, if not bigger ratings, than the Big 12 does. And they get bigger ratings than anyone in the AAC does. So they bring a lot of TV value. Now let's get back to that alliance I was talking about between the Pac-10, or sorry, the Pac-12, the Big 10, and the ACC. Very smart for them to do that. That alliance is really going to take effect a couple years down the line. But what that's going to mean is all of their big programs, their big blue blood, you know, nationally recognized programs, they're going to face each other during the regular regular season. All right. And they're going to do that so that when their TV contracts come up and they say, hey, we already have it set up. You know, so when the Pac-12 goes up and gets try to renegotiate their TV deal, they say, hey, USC is going to play Ohio State. They're going to play Florida State, you know, Oregon you know, they're going to play Penn State. They're going to play Clemson. And you might say, wow, you're going to play Clemson in, in, in Oregon? How the hell is That's a long trip. It's easy. You meet in Dallas. You play at the Cowboys Stadium. Or you meet in Houston. You know, that's how you do it. You meet in the middle. So it's very intelligent to do that. And by the way, those three conferences are pretty much going to shut out the SEC. All right, maybe some of the lower teams will play each other, but as far as your big blue blood type of teams, only those three conferences are going to play each other. So that way they can help each other with their TV contracts and they can keep pace in some kind of way with the SEC. So if the Big 12 and the AAC, if they merge and become this mega conference with BYU, making it 20 teams, this is where... The business side where it makes sense because then since the sec is getting shut out basically as far as non-conference games i mean their conference games i mean that's where they're going to make their bread that's where they're going to make their money on their tv deals is you know oklahoma playing alabama and texas playing lsu i mean that that's where that's going to happen but with this mega conference you can now form an alliance with the sec of all people as far as non-conference games. And they'd totally be down with that. And you could say, well, why would that matter? Dude, you can keep getting Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State every year. You can get TCU versus LSU. You can get Baylor versus Alabama. Now, is that the huge ratings like Ohio State versus LSU? No, it's not. But that, that option is not going to be there with this new alliance. You know, with the other three conferences. 
So the SEC, they really, you know, unless they want to play Conference USA or Division I schools or the Sun Belt Conference, you know, they need, they still need a decent uh, non-conference schedule. And this Big 12 Super Conference, it can give them that. And so if you can lock that kind of alliance down, if you're this new mega conference with all these teams, well, now you can go take that to uh, a TV network and say, hey, you know, I know we don't have Texas and Alabama, but we, now we got these 20 teams. We got teams like, like UCF and, and uh, Cincinnati. They're on the come up, you know, and we, we play the SEC. We got an alliance with them. We're going to be playing those big dogs every single year. That's going to that's gonna give them a better shot at getting a TV deal and some revenue. And as far as the TV thing goes, if you really want to think outside the box, in a few years, a platform like Amazon or uh, Apple TV, they may want to get into this college football game. There's a lot of money involved in it. So think about what you can do with streaming if you're this Big 12 mega conference. Let everyone else do it the old school way. Because even with all that stuff, I, like I said, they're still not going to be offered a big TV deal. It's going to be some money, but you might be able to get more money out of Amazon or Apple TV and say, hey, if you want to watch this super conference, watch us take on the SEC, you got to, you know, most people already have Amazon anyway, <laughs> you know, maybe it's $5 a month for the sports package for the, for the big 12 package or whatever it is. You know, like Amazon can get really creative in what they do. And how they present the games, you know, you can, you, not just your standard, here's two guys in the booth calling the game kind of stuff. And we saw this with, you know, some national championship games, college football national championship games, where you'd have your standard broadcast, you would have a local broadcast, you would have like a coach's booth, and they're watching coaches tape as, as the game goes on. They had six or seven different ways of you to watch that game. You can might be able to do this every single week. With several different games, you know, if it's streaming on Amazon, there's all kinds of ways to see it. That would be really cool and really exciting. It's going to take some outside the box thinking. It's going to have to think big picture with big goals. And why just go to 12 teams? Why just stay at 12 teams if you're the Big 12? Why just poach a couple of teams out of the AAC? And then in a few years, you're basically relegated to a group of five uh, conference again instead of being a power five and you got shit for a TV deal. It, it's just, that's not enough. You should want more than that because these eight teams do have value, but you've got to be able to get to that value. The AAC has value, but no one's going to ever give them a shot. They, they, they need some relevance. The Big 12 can provide that, and the AAC can provide a hell of a lot more competition, and in key markets around the country, Houston, Orlando, you know, get into the Ohio football market. Ohio, no one talks about Ohio, but Ohio is, you know, as far as one of the four or five top football uh, states in the entire country. So you want to get into that market. And Cincinnati would be a great way to get in there. You know, hell, Temple, Temple's in Philadelphia. That's a huge market, huge media market. So th there's, there's no, I mean, it's nothing but a win-win. Merge with the AAC. Become, you know, a mega conference, 20-team mega conference with BYU. Then form an alliance with the SEC. And now you really got something. Now you really have something. But, you know, just adding four teams, that's not going to get you where you want to go. It's better than eight. <laughs> it's better than eight. Anyway, that's my idea. And I think, I think that can really work. Anyway, thanks for watching this crap. I'll be back with some other crap later. Bye.